Thank you for joining us today at Lincoln Caverns and Whisper Rocks. If you would have asked me to talk about our history 10 years ago, I would have asked what history? Because compared to many showcase, ours is a relatively short one. But since surpassing 75 years and now starting our 90th anniversary, I've come to realize that we are pretty historic after all. The 1920s and 30s, as more Americans began to travel by automobile and more and more roads were built to accommodate them, roadside attractions began to spring up all over America, and Pennsylvania was no exception. Seen its share of places like Roadside America, Storybook Forest, and even an oversized coffee pot. Showcase were part of this changing landscape, and Pennsylvania was once home to about 14 showcase, only seven of which are currently open on a full-time basis. Baker in Franklin County, Alexander and Sea Ray in Mifflin County, Hipples in Bedford County, Onyx Cave in Berks County, Bale Lady in Center County, and Wonderland, now known as Coral Caverns in Bedford County, and even an attempt to develop Tituna in between Altoona and Tyrone. Lincoln Caverns was one of those roadside attractions, literally, as it was discovered in May of 1930 during the construction of the new U.S. Route 22. The farmers who owned the land in which the caverns were discovered decided the excellent location would make it a viable tourist attraction. After 13 months of development, Highway May Caverns opened to the public on June 25th of 1931. Ralph W. Stone, the Pennsylvania State Geologist at the time, was the keynote speaker at the dedication. Dr. Stone's address was entitled The Antiquities of Caveman. He had also chosen the first name of the new attraction, Highway May, in a naming contest. Dr. Stone published an early map of the caverns in the 1932 edition of his book, Pennsylvania Caves, in which he also includes a detailed description of the 500-foot tour. After a year of operating a show cave, the family decided they would rather be farming and the new attraction was up for sale. My grandfather, Myron Dunleavy Sr., loved caves. His summer job as a college student in southern Indiana was to look for illegal moonshine stills, many of which were hidden in caves. Ever since that experience, he wanted a cave of his own. Young Myron decided college wasn't for him, and he had no desire to become a doctor like his father, so he ran away with the circus and ended up in Buffalo, New York. His love of entertainment stuck with him, and although he had a regular job with the New York Telephone Company, he continued his entertainment ventures in vaudeville, an amusement park, a, and a theater. And he continued to look for his cave, running one ads in newspapers all over the Northeast. In May of 1932, Myron and his wife, Helen, were traveling through Pennsylvania on the new Route 22. And Helen, my grandmother, saw a door inside of the hill and exclaimed, look, Myron, there's the cave and it's right along this new highway. So they turned around and met the owners of Highway May Caverns, who told them their cave was up for sale. So my grandfather entered into a lease agreement with an option to buy the caverns and began operating the business in 1932. Each year for five years, the agreement was renegotiated while Myron tried to raise the money to buy a cave. He even tried selling stock certificates for his new entertainment venture, but to no avail. My grandfather was a member of the Albion New York Rotary Club, where he had spoken about his love of caves in the past. Two Rotarian friends, Ed Archibald and O.C. Gale, agreed to finance the cavern venture. Thanks to his Rotarian friends, 
The Dunlady family has been at Lincoln Caverns for three generations. The original name was hyphenated to sound Native American, although there was no evidence that anyone had been in the caverns prior to 1930. My grandfather changed the name to William Penn Caverns, and this is the earliest brochure that we have. Due to confusion with Penn's Cave, which had been open for many years, the name has changed to Lincoln Caverns in 1937 after the president Myron admired most. When my grandfather finally became the owner of the caverns in 1937, a fire mysteriously destroyed the ticket office prior to the July 4th holiday. The new building was constructed in three weeks to be used temporarily. It is still standing and now houses a photography studio. In 1937, the entrance got a new door, which is still there today, and the new building was constructed later to include a hot dog stand and a gas station. Visitors were still crossing two lanes of traffic to access the caverns. The third lane was not added until 1955. Prior to Interstate 80, Route 22 was the main route to New York City from Pennsylvania. The original tour lecture contained a lot of New York City names, and this was also incorporated into advertising over the years particularly in 1939 to 1940 during the New York World's Fair. My grandfather never lived in Huntington, nor worked at the caverns full time, but hired a succession of managers and visited several times a summer. In the late 1930s, my father, Myron Jr., came to work at the caverns and began attending Juniata College in 1940. During that time, he started digging in a sinkhole on the top of Warrior Ridge, looking for more cave. In September of 1941, after digging through about 40 feet of rock and debris, my father discovered what was known as the Upper Cave, now known as Whisper Rocks. The cave was not fully explored or mapped following the discovery because of the events of December 7, 1941, which changed the world and due to gas rationing, Sunday drives and sightseeing were put on hold for several years. My father was off to war and the caverns were open only part time during World War II. When my father returned after the war, he had a lot of work to do to get the business back up and running. He opened a popular restaurant in the ticket office building while continuing his education at Juniata College. During this time, he met my mother, Marion, who is a second generation Juniatian from New Jersey. They married in 1950 and ran the business together until the widening of Route 22 in 1955. My mother was a city girl and did not want to stay in Huntington. So the money they received for the purchase of the right-of-way was used for a move to the Harrisburg area. The Dunlavies again became absentee owners of Lincoln Cavern. The face and focus of Lincoln Caverns has changed over the years. 1961 saw the development of Whisper Rocks, and two caves were now offered for the price of one. For many years, show caves were seen primarily for their entertainment value. That has changed slowly over the years, and many caves, Lincoln Caverns and Whisper Rocks included, have evolved from the colored light show and imagination formation tours to one promoting cave conservation and protection of the fragile underground environment. Not growing up in the Huntington area, I had no desire to move here permanently. I did, however, make a decision when I graduated from high school to work at the caverns during the summer, since I'd be attending Juniata College. The first week I worked at Lincoln Caverns was the flood of 1972 after which we were shoveling mud out of the cave to clean up after the flood. I told my dad, one summer and I'm out of here. Getting that dirty was not what I had anticipated. After working in the Harrisburg area for about a year after college, I realized how special running a show cave was, and I returned to my labor of love. 
The focus has shifted over the years and now our business is 50% traditional visitors and 50% educational programs. Working with children is my passion and teaching them about caves continues to be the best part of the job. And fortunately, the rest of our dedicated Lincoln Caverns family love it. Our field trip program is the only one of its kind in the United States featuring a classroom visit prior to the field trip. We host about 60 schools each year, the majority in the month of May. Unfortunately, the 50 schools reserved for May 2020 did not visit us this year, but we are continuing to support them by supplying 12 page activity booklets about caves and cave life and provide them with a series of YouTube videos about requested topics, rocks, fossils, cave formation, philiothems, bats, cave life, and cave conservation. As a Girl Scout volunteer, I planned and organized many events for girls. This experience gave me the inspiration for our Scout events at Lincoln Caverns. We've hosted boys and girls from all over the Northeast since 1990. Our newest merit badge, to premiere this season is Exploration, which is all about the history of the National Speleological Society and the science of speleology, with experiments and a black light tour in the caverns. Special events are something we truly enjoy planning and hosting, giving guests a reason to come back. Our annual Bat Fest takes place every February on the Saturday closest to Valentine's Day. Ghosts and Goblins is now in its 36th year with a new theme each and every year. Discovery Days began with our 75th anniversary. Held the last weekend in June each year, the staff portrays characters important to our history, some of which you have heard about today. We have also added Caves and Cars Day on June 6th to our annual celebration. And Kids Cave Camp is a cave theme camp that takes place each June. Summer events include T-Rex Tuesdays, Blacklight Adventures every Wednesday night, and Family Fun theme tours on Thursdays. Saturday Saturdays premiere summer of 2020. We also take our message on the road to school nights, outreach events for scouts, to malls, the Penn State Arboretum, and on a weekly basis as part of the after school STEM program with the State College School District. About 30 events have been canceled this spring. Lincoln Caverns has a long history of supporting the National Speleological Society and other cave conservation organizations. And we're proud to work with local grottos of the NSS as well as other cave conservancies. The Mid-Atlantic Karst Conservancy did the most recent survey and map of Lincoln Caverns and Whisperop, adding several new discoveries. Members of various grottos have spent countless hours on further exploration in both Lincoln Caverns and Whisper Rocks. Cooperation between caves is not unusual. All caves are natural and no two are alike. Therefore, unlike many businesses, Caves need not compete with each other. In fact, they work closely together, exchanging ideas and providing the best possible tour to their visitors, thus encouraging the traveling public to visit more of the nation's show caves. The Pennsylvania Caves Association has cooperatively promoted their caves since the 1940s and prints a full color brochure. The Caves of Central Pennsylvania, Lincoln, Woodward, and Penn Cave assist one another by providing directions and brochures to all their guests. The three natural attractions are within hours drive of each other. The National Caves Association is a network of show caves throughout the United States, supporting each other in marketing, insurance, staff training, and education. Our national cave family is an invaluable resource to our small attraction in central Pennsylvania. With COVID-19 and the closure of the caverns for over two months, 2020 brings many more challenges to our small business. 
We are thrilled to finally be open again and are working hard to provide a safe and enjoyable experience for our guests. We have missed our busy spring season and the thousands of children we enjoy seeing each year, but look forward to our summer and fall tours and events for visitors from near and far. Of course, our small but dedicated staff makes this all possible. It is our goal to provide the best experience possible at Lincoln Caverns to inspire all of our guests to tour other show caves in the for visiting and please feel free to ask the staff any further questions that you might have. Have a blessed day.